today we're going to learn Rust programming. Um, the requisite is you need to have the Rust compiler. I'm not going to install how, I'm not going to discuss how to get the Rust compiler, but once you have that, we are now ready to create a Hello World program in Rust. And let us begin. Um, fun, main, everything is cozy here. I will tell you when things start to get Ill weird okay everything is still cool here okay shock factor now we have our source file in this text file time to compile it using the Rust compiler and now we have the executable Time to run the Hello World and we see the message printed. Now, all of this is how we do it in the programming languages that we know Python, C Sharp Java, JavaScript. Okay. But before I continue further, I have to tell you that trying to learn Rust heads on, okay, without mental preparation you're going to get a nose bleed because it is not like other programming languages you can learn c sharp java pascal colon head on okay but not rust no 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 you can't do that to learn rust you have to prepare and you have to have a specific mindset what you're up to you have to understand what rust is rust is not your pragmatic language it is a symbolic language okay on the left side is the practical language like Perl, python on the right side of the spectrum is the pure language like haskell pure functional programming in haskell rust sits in between there it has an elements of mathematics in it, guys. You know, pure functional programming like Haskell, they don't like absurdity. They don't like hocus pocus. They like things to be correct at the syntax level, okay? So I'm going to show now the weird things. Let us begin, I'm going to create function that divides two numbers okay um wait 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 the name of the function would be divide these are the two numbers that we need to divide and of course we need to return the operation there we have to prepare calling the function lit q divide 8 by 4 and then we will print the result quotient q now let's take a deep breath try to accept this we cannot divide. We can perform the division if the denominator is zero. That's illegal in mathematics. Therefore, we could not say I32. We cannot say that this function returns an I32. Other programming languages try to circumvent this by throwing an exception. But those in the functional programming discipline were in Rust is tends to be belong to hates try catch exception they do not like teleportation it's like you're in your room and in the next minute you're on the top of the pyramid just like in the movie jumper they don't like this they don't like hocus pocus okay they like calculus they like algebra symbolisms 
predictability, control, even at the level of flow, they, con they want to control it. Now, how RAS do this is instead of returning a fixed type of I32, it now returns an option, which is it could be an I32 or it could be a non. It will return a non if the denominator is zero, then it returns a non. However, if it's valid to divide them, then it returns sum. And now, now things get interesting here. Okay, think of the sum as some sort of a wrapper or container object and inside it is the native type at I32. And think of an option as some sort of um, ability of a function to return mixed types. So you and then Let's try to file now. And we could not print Q, but there's a trick to solve that. It's a formatting issue, just like that. Compile again. And now it compiles successfully, let us run the program. And the quotient is SOM2. But what the fuck is SOM2? How do we reason with SUM2? Can we even add 1 to SUM2? It's not an integer, right? It's, it's still in the nether, nether type. It's like, it's not an int 32. It's still SUM2. Can you add 1 into it? Like, let n equals q plus 1. Can you add 1 into it? Let's try. And you cannot. And if you stare at these errors, like cannot add. And as you can see, it's like we are now entering into the world of symbolisms, symbolics, okay? It's like, I don't know what it is, but you have to get used to this because it's going to be like this when you program in Rust. You have to understand the symbols and it's no longer your array, for loop, the peaceful, cozy zone of you have access to the indexes and you can for loop. It's no longer in that domain. We enter now into the domain of symbolics. When you program in Rust, you have to appreciate symbolism because if, you, if, you, if not, then you're going to have constipation. So, one workaround of this one, because Q is not an I32, but if we lit Q, lit some Q, like that, there, else, cannot be and then this fixes we don't even need this special format over here yep this is just a warning we can we can print this to please the compiler And now, no more warnings, run. And we divide it correctly, two. And since Q is now bound to the I32 type, when it is bound to a type, we can reason with it. We can reason, we can add one into it because we know that Q is already I32. We can add one therefore into it and N would be I32 and we can print. 
we can reason with a type this time. If we pass um, the zero, so we cannot divide by zero, compile again, and we go to the cannot be block. And hence, this shows some of the power of the applet in Rust. This like short circuiting. It's like a short circuiting state, uh, pro a kind of programming, wherein if it returned none, then the whole if will be false and it goes here. However, if it returned some, because it's an option, it can return some. And if you think this is weird, in the Haskell programming, there is even a maybe type, okay? So it's not as weird as you think. There is a maybe type in Haskell. So it's like, like it's just like that. The option is like that. It could be a maybe it's an I-32 or none. So if, if it can't properly divide the number because B is non-zero, then it returns sum, it goes here, and then Q will be bound to an I32 type and you can add it and you can point it and so on. You can perform the traditional way as we do in other languages when we know the types exactly. So this is weird because it has an option type, a mixed type, and, and this is also weird and you have to get used to this. So I suggest that to let yourself familiarize to constructs like this and before tackling on Rust, you should try to understand what the language is all about. They didn't invent Rust for no reason. Rust came to exist because of a particular niche. And in my observation, there is a certain feeling of symbolics in Rust. And you need to have an appreciation of this particular feel of it. Because if not, then you will not be at home in this programming language. If you program Rust like you program in, in C Sharp or Maybe C sharp has some functional in it, but you know the, the you know the idea, right? You have to step up your uh, abstraction to to the way that Rust wants you to. Okay, it needs some mental adjustment. You cannot fit a square into a circle; it won't work. We have to fit our mind into it in order to work with it. Unlike when we program in Perl, we mold it as the way that we want it because the language is malleable, just like clay. But in Rust, you have to, you're the one who, who should make the adjustment. You have to adjust to the way how Rust wants you to program. That's the reality. And if you cannot do that, then you know, because you will have a hard time doing Rust. That's it, guys.